Hi, I'm Susan Taylor with Scripps Health in San Diego, California. Please subscribe to our Scripps Health YouTube channel. We've got great videos featuring the latest technology, our stellar doctors, and inspiring patient stories. All right, you've just welcomed your new little baby into the world. And now that you're home, how do you get your newborn to sleep through the night? Developing good sleep habits early on is critical to a child's development, and it allows time for tired parents to recharge so they can have tons of energy to care for that new little bundle of joy. Joining us is Dr. Gurinder Dabia, a pediatrician at Scripps Clinic in Rancho Bernardo, California. Thanks so much for being with us, doctor. Thanks for having me. So how does an infant learn to fall asleep? How do you train them? Good question. Um, there are books and books that are written about sleep training. Um, the main thing to keep in mind is to work with your physician, your pediatrician, to ensure that your baby's developmentally ready um, to be able to sleep longer periods at night and they're growing appropriately in order to be able to go between feedings longer periods at night. So what is the best age to start this training? So usually laying the foundation and starting to think about long-term sleep training plan um, around four to six weeks of age. Um, is an appropriate time to start thinking about it. Um, between six to eight weeks of age, they're neurologically ready to go longer periods of time. So, um, so that's, that's around the time we can start laying the foundation. So, so before two months, it's whatever the baby wants. A lot of feeding and a lot of sleeping for the baby, but not, unfortunately, for the parents. Parents, right. parents um, right. And at that stage, they're, they're growing very rapidly. Their metabolic rate is extremely increased, which means they're eating a lot and sleeping a lot. Um, but but prior, at, before that, you do want to ensure that you are appropriately feeding the baby um, and because they are growing very rapidly. So at what time of night do infants usually fall asleep? So usually when they're starting to be able to go longer periods at night, um, anywhere between 10 to 11 is sort of a bedtime. Um, and then as they go even longer, between three to four months of age, they can go nine to 10 hours at night. Typically, the, t the bedtime is between 7 to 8 p.m. And how long can you expect them to stay asleep? So that also depends on which developmental stage they're in. Um, so between about six to eight weeks of age, sleeping through the night is only five hours, which for parents that are used to getting up every two to three, that, you know, that, that's a treasure. That feels, uh, like, that feels like a luxury. Like a luxury. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then usually after that, uh, they're able to go longer periods, about 10 hours. So, but, the, and you, but you say they, they're really not sleeping straight through the night, so they're waking up often. Why are they waking up? So again, they're still growing very rapidly. They're doubling their birth weight in the first six months. So um, limiting their feedings to only our daytime hours is not enough for them. Um, so they do still need some of those nighttime feedings. And you know, as, as they wake up, they also have wet diapers and, and bowel movements that need to be changed in association with the feedings. And do they also just want to be held? Well, so... Um, do they even know? <laughs> not necessarily, not necessarily. Babies um, are able to sleep long stretches if we don't interrupt them too much and if we allow them the opportunity um, to learn how to sleep. So um, we want you to hold this thought. We're going to come back and talk about this in a couple of minutes. Um, psychologists will tell you that during the first four months of life, the infant is developing trust. And so how do you communicate that trust with your infant? Do you do you, you know, risk breaking that trust if you rock the baby until they go to sleep and then you put them in the crib so that you're actually separating away from them? Um, we'll come back and talk about that in a couple of minutes. How much sleep does an infant need every 24 hours? Yeah, so, um, so initially they need quite a bit. Um, so usually within the first three months or so, it can be even up to 17 hours of sleep in a 24 hour period. So usually 14 to 17 hours. Um, and then after about four months of age, they can go anywhere between 12 to 14 hours of sleep in a 24 hour cycle. And should they be in the same room with you? Uh, in a bassinet or a crib? Yeah, I think initially that makes parents feel a lot more comfortable to have their newborn near them. Um, but I think you do have to keep in mind that around two to three months of age, they're a lot more aware of their surroundings. So um, any movement or noise that's made in the room could affect their sleep. And that includes daytime sleep if they're sleeping in a living room. Um, they're a lot more attuned to their environment. So, um, so that's up to the parents to decide when the appropriate time is to move the baby. Um, but they're definitely more stimulated. So. so if they hear the sound of your voice, is that soothing to the baby or does it actually keep them awake or, awake, or does that interrupt their sleep? It could potentially interrupt, interrupt their sleep. Um, it, it depends on what they're getting up for. Um, usually they're in deep sleep and if we don't 
interrupt them during the time that they're in those different sleep cycles and changing between sleep cycles, they're able to get to the other side um, without us interfering. Unfortunately, we do tend to interfere more. Um, and and so, so sometimes there, our voice um, could be more, uh, more, too much of a stimulation for them when they really just need to sleep. And what's your thoughts on um, holding the baby, rocking the baby to sleep, and then putting the baby in the crib versus having the baby in the crib and just kind of maybe gently touching them and singing to them or you know soothing them to sleep. Sure, sure. So, um, so initially that's a good way to start the foundation of sleep training. Um, we're holding our baby, we're feeding our baby, but at some point detaching those things that um, are allowing that, uh, that are sort of crutches to them going to sleep on their own. So I usually recommend holding the baby and or, or holding and feeding and then detaching once they're starting to get a little bit sleepy and then laying the baby down. So that you can start even at four, six, eight weeks of age. Um, so, so I think it's appropriate at certain ages and stages of sleep training, but eventually um, that can, that can be, be negative towards your effort to sleep train your baby. What are your thoughts about having the baby sleep in bed with you? So the American Academy of Pediatrics does not recommend co-sleeping. Um, so, so usually if there's any um, co-sleeping, there is a risk um, with pillows and blankets, um, alcohol use, extremely sleepy parents, which is basically every parent of a newborn. Um, so, so the risk is greater than sort of the benefit of co-sleeping. And how long should you feed or nurse your baby before you expect them to fall asleep? Is it five, 10, 15 minutes, hour? So, so initially, um, the babies are probably falling asleep as they're feeding, um, and the goal would be to try to detach them either from the bottle or the breast um, before they fall fully asleep, so just as they're getting sleepy. As they get older, ideally feeding them um, well before um, it's sleep time, and ideally in a different space than where they're normally going to fall asleep. So in a living room, you know, you have a six-month-old baby, feed them in the living room, and then get them the last little bit of sleep, um, calming down before sleep in their room. So you've completely detached the feeding aspect with soothing to go to sleep. And then what if you rock the baby to sleep in your arms and then you put them in the crib and they start crying? Do you go back to them right away or do you let them cry for a while? I think that's been debated uh, for, for centuries. Since probably. the dawn of man. Since the dawn of man, exactly. Um, it really depends on which sleep training technique um, that you feel you and um, your, your partner can proceed with. Um, most sleep training techniques do um, require some sort of crying to allow your baby to learn how to sleep. Um, there's the cry it out, the Ferber method, um, the modified Ferber. There's what's, the, what's the Ferber method? So that's when you go into, into the room when the baby is crying um, and you start off with say 10 minutes of them seeing that you're there, um, but trying not to pick up the baby. Um, and then eventually then the next time, it's a shorter period of time that you're in there when the baby is crying. Most of the sleep training methods um, really focus on not picking up the baby when the baby is crying. Um, and again, there are different sleep training methods that will work for the baby, but not the parents and vice versa. So you have to sort of pick the one that you're going to be able to sustain long term because sleep training is not one time and that's it. It's really something that you have to revisit. It's a learned um, behavior. It's, it, it's learned and then also, you know, they get sick. Uh, there's a, a time change, you travel, then you always have to come back to a method, um, shorter, hopefully, not, not as long a duration as the initial sleep training, um, but you always have to be able to come back to it um, to get them back on a routine. At what age do you start to let the baby cry for a bit? Yeah, so initially when they're ready to be able to go longer periods at night, um, between feedings about six to eight weeks of age, um, trying to lay them down without having them being eating to go to sleep, um, that's a good place to start. And then usually about two to three months is a good time to work with your pediatrician um, to make sure that your baby is ready to be sleep trained. And that's when you know the discussion about how long to cry and if to cry and if that method w is gonna work for your family. If they're crying, how long should you let them cry? 
Uh, that's a good question. So unfortunately, there's not really a great answer, um, you know, in terms of specific timing. Um, usually we try to work with parents to find out what is the sleep training technique that they are going to be able to maintain and be consistent with. Sometimes many parents are only able to handle five minutes of baby crying. Um, sometimes there are some parents that can last an hour of a baby crying. Um, and, and sometimes that, that is what it takes. Um, but you have to sort of work with the family to see what they're able to sort of do as a partnership, but then also to be consistent and to revisit um, that, that sleep training technique later on. And consistency is key, isn't it? Consistency is key. Um, support, um, you know, and, and partnership is, is also very important. And then also knowing that this is this is a very, this is one of the most important things that, that you're going to be teaching your child um, and allowing them to learn how to sleep, to self-soothe um, and to get an appropriate nighttime sleep um, is really important for their future in so many ways. And when they awaken in the middle of the night, um, should you let them cry? For how long do you try and let them cry themselves back to sleep? Yeah, so ideally it depends on how far along you are in the sleep training um, method. So initially there's a lot more crying and then that duration of crying should be less and less. Um, but, but there is some crying that is involved when as you're getting them to sleep initially and then also every subsequent time that they wake up. What you want to make sure is that there's not some other reason why your baby is crying, right? So, um, so if they have a fever, if they're teething, if they've gotten sick, um, so sometimes you, you do want to ensure that the reason that they're crying overnight is not related to, to that, um, but is just that they're still learning how to, how to sleep at night. And what about having music or white noise, um, that, like the sound of waves in the room to help them fall asleep? Yeah, so I, I think for a lot of babies that can be very soothing. Uh, like with anything that can become a habit, you want to make sure you have an exit strategy so when you're going to wean it. So for instance, American Academy of Pediatrics um, actually has found a decreased risk of SIDS when using the pacifier at less than is. is sudden infant death syndrome um, in less than six months of age. But again, at what point do we want to wean that pacifier because that, that could be a long-term habit that's hard to eliminate as easily. And sleep training is not uniform. It could be very different from one child to the next. Exactly, and I, and I think that's what parents um, have to sort of keep in mind, and that's why um, there are so many books that are written is because it's not one size fits all. Um, so what worked for your first child may not work for your second child. I think the, the most important thing is um, to understand that personalities of children are different, but consistency once you do choose a certain sleep training technique is the most important uh, factor to success. All right, so we referenced this a couple of minutes ago. Let's come back to this. Psychologists say that during the first four months of life, um, the infant is developing trust. So how do you communicate that trust to your infant? Do you, do you risk breaking that trust if you rock the baby to sleep and then put the baby in the crib because now you're separating from the baby? So when the baby is ready to be sleep trained, um, that trust is ideally um, being built at other times of the day, right? So cuddling and snuggling and rocking and interacting with your baby should be occurring during the daytime as well. But I think the very important thing that you're teaching your baby by allowing them to self-soothe is that nighttime is for sleep and daytime is for all of the other activities um, that, that really do continue to build trust and um, solidify that bond between parent and child. What are the signs that your baby has sleep issues and you now really need to consult a doctor? So I think you want to make sure that first and foremost your baby is ready developmentally to start the sleep training process. So, um, so they've shown appropriate weight gain and growing well, they're feeding well, um, and if there are any signs of fever, um, vomiting, um, not feeding as well during the daytime, or even teething, then you want to make sure you involve uh, your pediatrician in the conversation uh, as you proceed with sleep training. And the one piece of advice, when your baby sleeps, you should sleep? <laughs> yes. That we, we tell that to patients and they kind of roll their eyes as, yes, that's right, I'm, I'm not going to do that. But, it, but I think it, it, it's really important initially when your baby's on that 24-hour cycle that you do get 
a little bit of sleep in the daytime because that is going to impact a month later your mood, um, you know, supply of milk. It impacts so many things. So, um, so I think if the baby's on the 24-hour cycle, that means that that you're on the 24 hour cycle too. And then just to be res respectful um, of yourself and allow yourself that space and know that it's, it's not forever, even though it feels like that on many days, it, 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 will, it will come to an end soon. Any final thoughts, doctor, to sum it up? Yeah, so I think the most important thing is to, to work with your pediatrician to ensure that your baby is ready developmentally um, to sleep train um, and start to allow your baby to self-soothe by detaching the feeding um, and, and allow them just to kind of be laying down when they're just a little bit sleepy. Um, and then eventually three to four months, you know, think about what sort of sleep training techniques are going to work um, for your family and for your baby. Um, partner with whoever you have um, around you for support, um, and then also consistency, um, just to be as consistent as you can going forward, knowing there will be days you want to throw in the towel and you can't do this anymore, but tomorrow's the next, another day, and you just keep moving forward with it. Doctor, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. If you want more information on babies and sleep, please click on the link or go to scripps.org forward slash videos. Want more critical information about your health? We take care of you from head to toe. Please subscribe to our Scripps Health YouTube channel and follow us on social media at Scripps Health. I'm Susan Taylor. Thanks so much for joining us. It's our mission at Scripps to help you heal, enhance, even save your life.